I'm like, Dana Radcliffe, what? No, weird, wrong choice. But for our bizarro version of Weird Al that we've created in this like fantasy world, there is no one else that can play him. Like he, he is Daniel Radcliffe. <laughs> I just got to see uh, Weird last night, actually, at Beyond Fest. Awesome. Um, yes, yes. Uh, so this is a decade in the making, and I could not believe when I was watching the film how many moments like came directly from the Funny or Die yeah. sketch, uh, which then leads me to question, without spoiling, how do you decide which ones don't make it in? Because there are some moments that I was like, where did it go? Yeah, yeah. I mean, we... When we started writing this, we wanted to put all those moments in, you know. Uh, I think, like, breaking down the outline at, at first was, like, taking all those trailer moments and spreading them out. It's like, all right, can we reverse engineer a movie <laughs> from a fake movie trailer? And sort of, we sort of could a little bit. Like, there's 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 sort of moments throughout that we hit. Um but once we got deeper into crafting the story, you know, we we wanted to do something a little more original with it, I think. Um, that trailer feels a little more like a just a straight biopic parody. And we wanted to, like, veer off from that a little bit. And while, while we do, we do kind of satirize the, um, like, the beats, the story beats of a biopic. And not just a musical biopic, like... Boogie Nights, Forrest Gump, you know, <laughs> um, everything from that, you know, to like Rocket Man and and The Doors, and uh, uh, you know, we wanted to we wanted to just sort of uh, uh, you know like he's going to hit rock bottom at some point, but like what's what's our version of rock bottom? So so like once we ended up cr crafting the story, moments from the trailer just by had to fall away because they didn't make story sense. Like we didn't want to be too beholden to, you know, as fun as the trailer was. Uh, you know, we didn't <laughs> to those moments. Understandable. It was just enough to be yeah, fabulous. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, now you collaborated with Weird Al on the screenplay. So obviously he had a lot of input, but then you also directed Normal Al let's say, um, yes. Yes. in the film for a bit. What was that experience like? I, I would say that directing Al Yankovic and Dan as Weird Al in the same scene together was confusing. <laughs> I mean, you'd walk in and you'd say Al, and it's like everyone looks. You know? It was a blast directing him as an actor, you know? Uh, um He's so funny. Like, I've been a fan of his my whole life, and and not, you know, not just the music. Like, I made my grandpa take me to see UHF in the movie theater when I was nine years old, um, and uh, he fell asleep, but uh, but I enjoyed it. Um, and, uh, yeah, so, like, I, I mean, I've loved Al as a performer, as, a, as, as an actor, as, as a personality. Um, so, you know, it was like I knew what I was getting. I knew what to look for. And and, um, and we wrote it together. So it's like he knew exactly how to play it. We had talked about the scene so much, you know. <laughs> I love that. I mean, speaking of cameos, the parade of cameos yeah. was incredible, uh, both in terms of like the actors and then also some of the characters they are portraying. Yes. Uh, so I'm just wondering, like, was there ever, I know that, way back when you could ask Weird Al, like, is it cool if uh, I do this? Yeah. Was there anyone that you had to be like, is this cool? Or is it just like, you know, vibe, Goodwill, Madonna loves it. I just know in my heart. I mean, I hope that Madonna loves it. Um, and yeah, I mean, she, we, none of us have talked to her about it. <laughs> you know, there's certain things you have to get permission for. Like if you're going to use a song, for instance, you know, we're going to put Eat It in the movie. We have to clear beat it, you know? So uh, the, the Michael Jackson estate, we need to contact, you know? Um, but as far as like someone playing someone else, I, I don't know, we're protected by parody law, you know? <laughs> like it's just, it's it's clearly a joke. And we're also not, we're not really like punching down on anybody. Uh, we're hopefully giving them, you know, if the, if the real person sees it, they'll get a kick out of it because it's a fun movie version of themselves. <laughs> in like a heightened reality. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, Daniel Radcliffe obviously is amazing, but even though I have seen Miracle Workers and I know that he is hilarious, when I first heard that he is playing Weird Al, I was like, 
comedy. Yeah. But even though I know, even though I know. So what made him write uh, for the role from the start? So we wanted someone who was like a great dramatic actor as well as a great comedic actor. And like the cho the choices he's made post Harry Potter have just been so, you know, we're like, oh, this is a guy that's gonna, I think he's gonna get what we're going for here. Um, really the assignment was to like, for him to play it, like the comedy is all there on the page. It just has to be performed a certain way. Like he had to play it really grounded and he had to play the drama. He had to play it like it was a drama. And like, that's what's so great about him. Like understanding that and like he's never pushing comedy. Like he's never, he's, you know, he's, he's trusting the words, he gets the assignment and it's like the more dramatic he plays it, the better it is. And I get what you're saying. Like, yeah, if I had read Daniel Radcliffe's playing Weird Al in a Weird Al biopic, and if it was like going to be just a straight biopic, I'm like, Daniel Radcliffe, what? No, weird, wrong choice. But for our bizarro version of Weird Al that we've created in this like fantasy world, there is no one else that can play him. Like he, it, he is Daniel Radcliffe. <laughs> Yes, I did love it. But speaking of what you're saying, like playing the drama and that being funny, uh, Julianne Nicholson as his mother, like amazing. Just one I'm, look. She looks down the Hawaiian shirt and I'm already in stitches. Oh, uh, <laughs> it was the best watching that with an audience. I wanted it to hit the way it hit. And like it just really that moment really hit. <laughs> I mean, she's so fantastic. I mean, com coming off like an Emmy win for Mare Feast Town, which is just so dark and like you know, emotionally grueling. And like, um, uh, I think she had just played like Marilyn Monroe's mother in, in Blonde, you know, uh, which is just, this must have been such a breath of fresh air for her. And she's such a fantastic, like grounded, plays it so real that, I mean, she like brought something to those scenes that, I mean, I, I, I guess I always hoped would be there, but I, but I just didn't know it until I saw it. And I was like, oh, wow. I'm like so used to directing comedies that are like very straight comedy. Right. And uh, I mean, this made me, I was like, well, oh, maybe I should just start directing actual drama. <laughs> <laughs> you I'm have like, the chops. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, it's really nice to get these real genuine reactions from people <laughs> in these scenes. Yeah, so it was uh, amazing. And hopefully uh, everyone will just host viewing parties when it comes on Roku, because I think that you just have to have you got to have some friends when you watch it. Yeah, so. <laughs> it's definitely, it plays really well in a crowd. It's definitely, uh, it's definitely something that people should, yeah, gather all their friends up for. <laughs> well, thank you so much. It was such a uh, great time. Yeah, yeah. Time. Thank you.